Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to the Talent 500 YouTube channel and this is SDET interview series. I have created uh, many more uh, videos on the same series so those links are in the description section so I would definitely suggest you to go through those videos before coming to this one because all those are interlinked. So yes, so stay with us and let us know your input if you have any in the comment section. Uh, previously, we have discussed on uh, Selenium, Java, Framework interview questions. Uh, today's session is mostly uh, focused on uh, one of the most important aspect of uh, automation and that is API. So since the last uh, five to six years, the demand of API testing and API automation has been specifically exponentially increased and uh, most of the product companies expect uh, that the usual QA role uh, supposed to be contribute towards the backend or service level of testing. And when we talk about backend and service level of testing, the knowledge of API is quite mandatory. So uh, welcome back and let's start with our um, API testing interview question series. Uh, if you want to check the previous uh, interview question sessions, you can check in the comment section. Um, so let's start with our first question, right? Our first question is what is an API? This is a very basic and fundamental question. Okay, whenever you answer this question, I would suggest to give a real time example. Only theoretical answer may not uh, help you to uh, give a satisfactory um, explanation. So better to provide an example. So I will also explain with an example. API usually means application programming interface. Okay, it is the way of communication between two applications. Or else you can easier way you can say that it is a middleman between your front end and back end. That means it takes our request from front end and it send it to back end. Back end will process the request and back end again sends the response back to the front end through the help of API. So API works as a messenger who takes the request from front end to back end and then again bring back the uh, response from back end to front end. So it is kind of a middleman between front end and back end. Similarly, you can give an example of this pizza one, right? Where Aaron wants a pizza and he sends a request to pizza for pizza via phone. So he's sending a request and then the pizza is getting prepared and then it is de getting delivered back to Aaron. So in this case, uh, this sends a request and answers request for pizza via delivery car is basically the work of an API right so in sort of way you can explain like okay api is pro application programming interface which is kind of a middleman between front end and back end and its primary job is to take the request from front end to back end and uh, once the request is processed it will bring back the response from back end to front end right always keep an example it is always uh, helpful in interviews when you have an example with you with that let's move back to the next question what are the types of methods mostly used in rest api testing this question can also be asked in another way like uh, can you tell me some of the api methods that you have used while working in your project or they may ask you like okay can you uh, explain some of the most used methods uh, that usually uh, goes uh, in most of the um, uh, projects in microservice or monolith right mostly microservice so any question they may ask which is related to api methods so you need to uh, keep in mind that there are usually five methods which are being mostly used get post put patch and delete those are the five most important methods so if you answer all the methods it, it seems like you have learned it from youtube or you have theoretical knowledge that's why to give an sense that okay you have real time experience and you have really worked on it in depth i hope that that is correct right so if you guys have worked then you would have uh, answered in this way that okay five methods are frequently used get post put patch delete after in out of that the priority one is get post delete which is frequently used second priority is put third priority is patch from my experience i am sharing this okay so that whenever you give the answer you can give it in this way there are two more methods called as head and options that one you don't have to mention of your own unless they ask you okay if they ask you that okay can you tell me what is this head and options then only uh, you should uh, uh, men mention this or else uh, get post put patch delete is more than enough okay let's move back to our third question that is what is http status codes status codes are kind of you can say when you call somebody what you say hello right and another person on the person which is on the other side of the phone usually reply with like hi then you came to know that okay the person which i am trying to talk has replied to me now you can start your conversation status code is nothing but just a reply from your server to your client that means in our case when front end talks to back end or client send a request to server the first uh, greeting or response way is status codes from the http status codes we figure out that what is the status of our request 
right so if i uh, call somebody and he is not picking the call then it gives me a busy tone right so you can assume that's a kind of a status code right so browser and server inter interacts via http status code the browser transmits your request to the server right and when then delivers a response when you use the internet to seek information from a server this is theoretical so i have explained with an example so it would be easy for you to remember so status code is nothing but a health check of your request that has been sent to the server and always remember status codes you need to validate first in an api testing project that's why uh, what uh, you should aware like what is status code and what is and prepare with an example right as i given one example prepare the example so that if you are unable to explain it or running out of words you can immediately give this example okay that would clarify the things now when we discuss about what is a status code the next uh, question or you can say a follow up question in the interview may be like uh, can you tell me what are the types of status codes or do you know what are the types of status codes we have in http standards so those are the follow up questions so usually there are five types okay and those types what do we mean by types means when we get some response from somebody right so usually to debug it better and to understand it better that what uh so means our server is trying to convey to us through the status code they have divided the entire responses into five type 1x series 2x series 3x series 4x series and 5x series when i say 1x series 2x series that means 1x series contains 100 to 199 200 2x series contains 200 to 299 so any status codes starts with 2 2 would be your 2x series for example 200 202 200, 204 everything is 2x series same goes for 3x 4x and 5x series now what are the types the 1x series will be a informational response that means if you get any status code which starts with 1 right or belongs to the 100 series that means server is trying to inform you something right the request was received a continuing process so server try to provide some information about a request but when you get 2x series that means successful that means your process the request that you sent has been processed successfully by the server and server has already provided you the response so as a tester 200 would be like your first uh, uh, assertion right whenever you send a request you need to first check that your request has been successfully processed and the response has been received successfully from the server so 200 means everything is good happy path right 3x series means redirection redirection means let me give you a typical example let you are ordering a pizza from an pizza app right so when you go to the checkout page what happens when you click on the pay button it will redirect to to your banking client right so whichever bank you are using it, it it will redirect your page to that banking client right so that is nothing but your redirection redirection means to complete your request it needs to redirect it and the request to another part right that means further actions needed to be taken redirection the typical example i have given you right from pizza app to the payment service fourth one is the forex series this is the one which you are going to deal for a very long period of time when you are working with the api testing and forex client error basically forex error basically means it is something from the client side something from the client side means when you are making a request from client to server if you make any mistake in the request that you are making then it will give you 400 for example you are sending a, a request to create a student right and to create a student it is required to provide student name so in the request you forget to provide the student name then it will give you a 4x client error because the request that client is sending is not correct you are getting the point right and you are trying to create a student um, entry but you supposed to provide a, a, a username and password right to uh, make an entry but username and password is incorrect then it is also a client error because the request to process the request server needs your credentials and if you are not providing the credentials or providing wrong credentials then also it is a client error just the other side of it is 500 means the server error so 4x series is client error 5x series is server error so now what would be a typical example of 500 series let you are you have made a request which is completely correct there is no problem with your request so client error is not there but when server is trying to process it due to some problem server went down now when the server went down it cannot process a request right at that time you will get server error so every server error usually means you have done 
not, no mistake in the request rather the server is down there is some problem with the server that's why you are getting server error always remember that when we get a server error the first thing we do is like ping the server if you ping the server you will get to know that what is the health status of your server right so it would be easy for you to debugging this is just an additional tip okay so whenever you get this kind of situation be sure that there is some problem with the server so try to give it a ping right when you ping you will get a fair idea that okay this is the problem so you can later on debug it right superb let's move on to our next question that what is put method always remember the five methods that i have explained right over here get post put pass delete you should have in-depth knowledge in these five methods because in interview they are going not going not going to ask you just okay they are going to grill you on this so you have to be very clear fundamentally on this thing okay so i will explain it in a easier way okay what is put method it is basically used to update a resource that means whenever you want to update something you will need the put method okay when you want to update something you will need the put method but there is a catch over here right only saying this may not be enough you need to give an example so let me give you give you a typical example let you have a student called a charles already existed in, in your database right but what happens uh, charles has recently changed his phone number right and you have to update charles phone number in the database right so now for that what you need to do you need to make a api request the api request supposed to update the phone number in the database for charles then you will take help of put method now put http put method will carry the latest phone number and the details of charles and send it to the server server will process it and then update the database and provide you the response that okay the phone number of charles has been updated correct there is one more thing over here just put method is idempotent so here i am going to give you a little bit more uh, information about idempotency also okay just give me a minute let me give you a brief about item potency so let me explain you about the item potency right this is one of the very important thing okay item potency is kind of the concept which is being definitely asked you in the interview okay so it's kind of a question you cannot avoid you have to understand it so i will try to explain it in a easier way so that you will be able to answer it right so let me start with that item potency is the behavior where when you try to send a request multiple times right when you try to send a request multiple times the response is going to remain same the response is going to remain same that means if i am making a request to update charles phone number 10 times also it is not going to do anything different that it has done in the first attempt right it has it will just update charles number Right, so if you are sending a put request and, and again and again to update chance number to one two three four five, if you made it ten times, also it is not going to make any additional changes, right? With the every new attempt, so whatever it has done in the first attempt, that is the final action, right? That means that if you make the same request again and again, and still the response is going to remain same, and what it has been mentioned over here, right? That should be equivalent to single request modification. It is called as item potency. All put methods are item potency. That means it doesn't matter how many times you are sending the request, right? The response is going to remain same, and it doesn't add any value also because it is equivalent to the single request modification. Always put it in mind that. Uh, and let me add you one more point over here. All the methods that we have discussed, five methods: get, post, put, patch, delete. Right? Out of that, your get, put, patch, everything is item potency. But your post method is not item potency okay so in the next question when i will explain like what the post method basically does it will make more sense to you that why post method is not item potent but i hope you understand that put method is item potent so what are the takeaways when i want to update some information give the example during interview okay for example i want to update the phone number of charles then i'm going to use put method over there right and the main uh, what is the uh, put method uh, feature feature is it is item potent correct awesome Oh, one one point over here when we go to the patch i will give you one more pointer okay okay with that let's move forward to the next question that is what is post method right so as put method is to update similarly post method is used to create a new resource let's for an example creating a new user account right so let me give you an example of charles also so for example when you want to create an entity of a new student call as uh, charles right if you want to create entry of a new student called as charles then what you will do you will use post method 
because in the post and always remember in the post method you need to send the representation of the resources to be created what do you mean by representation of the resources to be created i know this is quite more technical but let me put you in easier way uh, to send the representation of the resources to be created means if you want to create a new user called the charles then you need to provide some mandatory four details charles name charles father name charles address charles phone number so these four are nothing but the representation of the resources to be created that means the attributes or fields that the data server need to create a new entry of charles right so post method is basically used to create a new resource with the resource you need to provide the representation of the resources if you are unable to remember the uh, definition theoretical definition that has been written over here do not hesitate to provide the example that i have shared with you always remember if you try to memorize the definitions there is high probability that you are going to forget this that's why i always advise all my students that stick to the example it will save you now there is a twist over here post is not id important okay you need to remember this get put patch everything is id important but post is not id important why because if you retry the request n times you will end up having n resources with n different urls created on server so what happens if you keep on sending request to create different different entry of charles then automatically it is going to create multiple input right which is not an ideal approach that's why they make post as non id important or else you will end up creating 10 input of charles right you don't want that right you don't want to get uh, multiple entries of charles in the server that will that will not only mess up the entire uh, structure or the way you are managing the uh, students data rather it will also create a problem of duplications and many more right that's why post is always not id important that means if you retry the request n times you will end up having n resource with um, uh, different urls created on server right that's why post is not id important right so you have to be very careful if you make 10 rec 10 requests it is going to create 10 entries so if you retry the request n times you will end up having n resources with n different urls created on server so you have to be very careful over here right so post is not id important so when you make a post request if you are making duplicate entries it would all on you right it will mess up everything so you have to be very careful right post is non id important but put is id important so if you make multiple requests also that's fine right <laughs> but in post it will not help you it will create a lot of mess so be careful with that right let's move on to the next one which is a very important one what is patch method now what is patch method is not important but difference between put and patch is very important i'm going to give you an example on this don't worry okay so patch method is again uh, usually help to um, update okay it is also kind of an update scenario only but there is a catch over there okay let me take you over there i will show you an example like what how does a post and put method looks like okay so let's take an example uh put is also updating patch is also updating so what's the difference between them let me show you that thing okay what's the difference between them so let you want to uh, update uh, the data of michael okay the name is michael father's name is john uh, address is vancouver and phone number is something like this right and you want to update only the phone number so if you are updating it with put then you have to send all the four details again again i am repeating so you want to update only phone number with put what you need to do you need to send the name father's name address along with the new phone number it's not like if you pass only phone number it will work no you need to send all the details again but in patch you can send only the field where you want to change things that's why patch comes sometime more handy right because see you are you want to update only phone number so you could have sent only phone number right but that is not possible in put in put you need to send name father's name address phone number again though you are not making changes name father's name and address but in patch if you want to change only phone number then send the phone number information only isn't it smooth right that's why put and patch both are same both are trying to update the things but the difference is that in put you need to send the entire format again in patch you have to send the field where you want to make the update as like phone number so it is quite easy right only send the phone number and your data will get updated but that does not happen in put in put you need to send the entire request again correct remember patch is again id potency put patch both are id potency okay what is delete method as the name suggest right delete method is usually used to delete the 
um, uh, resource right for example you want to delete the information about charles then you will use delete right one point to remember over here the response code the http status code that we talked about is mostly 204 for delete okay you don't have to remember rest of the things but you should uh, add this point uh, let me do one thing to help you uh, on this let me add one thing over here the http status code code is 201 created okay 201 created because sometimes they ask this one okay you have to be prepared on this okay sometime they ask so better to remember right so for post the status code that you are going to get is 201 in delete most of see why they ask in delete because if you have really worked on something so you would have known that delete always gives 204 most of the time no content or 200 but most of the time it gives 204 as per my real-time experience so if they ask you that what are the status codes you usually get what should you uh, say you should say that you usually get 204 or no content for deleted method let me update it over here okay no content okay 204 no content for your response code okay this is very important there is one more method called as get which we are going to discuss in our next session but till till now you should remember what is status course type of status course difference between put and patch what is item potency uh, what is post method right what is the status score that we get in delete method because barely they are going to ask you what is delete method right because that is kind of a very basic stuff they will ask you what are the status code you get in delete method mostly put and patch the hundred percent they will ask okay and uh, what are the methods you use in your uh, project right let's move on to the next question what are the benefits of api testing now the interview man the interviewer may not ask you directly what are the benefits of api testing he may ask you that if you have ui automation already in your project then why you are considering api testing this would be your typical question okay or can you tell me what are the reasons uh, in uh, in most of the companies they are preferring api testing more than a uh, ui testing right so for that there are four reasons earlier testing faster time to resolution speed and coverage of testing easier test maintenance this is the theoretical stuff right i'm going to give you one more uh, example over here which will help you to explain things and remember things easily how it helps in earlier testing so what happens usually in our development phase what we do let me take you to one more diagram okay in our development phase what we do uh, let's take an example that this is some kind of structure you have okay you are designing you have been assigned a project where you are uh, working on the help and support part of a website right now what happens um, there is a sprint of around uh, 10 days seven days for development three days for testing now you don't know how to uh, do testing in three days because the real estimation you have given before is five days right when you dig into it more you figured out that out of the seven days of development in in five days only the api development is completed ui will take two more days that's why they are taking seven days for entire development now if you would have known about api testing or your project has already implemented api testing or you have resources to perform api testing you could have started the testing on the fifth day only because by fifth day api are ready your api development backend development is ready by the fifth day right six seven days for ui design and mapping your ui with your backend that's why they say earlier testing because you can start your testing at the early phase you don't have to wait for the ui to be developed completely once your api is ready you are good to go so now out of the 10 days of your sprint if you are aware of api testing you will start your testing on the fifth day because by the fifth day api development is done so by sixth seventh your api testing is done on seventh day when they will give you the ui you can easily test it within two days that's why they say earlier testing i always give this example to my student that's what i'm sharing with you uh, also right it will help you to explain things okay they may ask you in this way also in interview that uh, let's assume that i have a sprint of 10 days and they have asked me that i can start testing on seventh day so but you know that three days is not enough for testing then what approach you will take then you can answer smartly like this that if i am uh, if they are completely dependent on ui testing i would definitely suggest them to start api testing which will give us a benefit of starting the testing earlier right second benefit is faster time to resolution definitely when api test fail you know exactly where our system broke because in ui uh, getting know that which area is really impacted is difficult but when you go to the e api part your endpoints are there right you can easily figure out okay this endpoint is broken for example updating the student endpoint is broken creating a new student endpoint is broken so it will be easy or quick for the developer to figure out the impact areas third point is speed or coverage of testing definitely speed right why speed 
so this is the number i have given you can give this an example but along with it let me give you one more example how how speed works over here for example you are ordering a pizza or you are creating a new uh, student entry of charles right in the ui what you need to do you need to enter uh, the url you need to provide your username and password then you need to click on button create student right you need to type the charles name charles uh, father name address and phone number it will take all those time right then you will click on okay it will uh, the page will load and then it, you will get the success message that entry has been created it will around take around one minute or two minute for example but in api it will take less than one second now why less than one second because you don't you have no relation with the ui you don't have to manually entry enter means you don't have to enter anything so in the ui automation script also we put values it go and enter right in api testing you don't have to enter the fields automatically all those requirements will be sent to with your request so whenever you send a request all those name father's name address phone number is included in the request so it will directly go and create it that's why api are much faster right because you are you don't have any dependency on ui loading you don't have a dependency to move from one screen to another you don't have a dependency to kind of uh, manually uh, wait or make your script wait until the page loads so all those things you can avoid this is a typical example i have given i would suggest you always give this example when you are answering okay without example your answers will not be taken properly the last point is easier test maintenance this one i most not agree all of the time because i have worked in all kind of automation but yes this is one of the point you can add but if you skip also that's fine i would suggest skip it okay just the three points are enough earlier testing faster time to resolution and speed coverage of testing right so uh, just let me add you a couple of point whenever you are trying for api testing interview always have a example with you as i have given if you are not giving an example and expecting that you will may get a response from the hr soon then the chances would be less so always try to have an example it will give you more input okay with that uh, we are not done yet okay we will are going to have multiple api uh, interview sessions and i know it uh, you guys will definitely benefited out of it so stay support us right and thanks to talent 500 it is uh, trying to help us create those kind of interview sessions and help the um, uh, job seekers right to get their job easily and if you are uh, not aware of talent 500 then i would suggest definitely go for it check that because i have seen there are some jobs in talent 500 which has very good package okay salary package my personal experience okay in bangalore and all there are many good sdet profiles and automation profiles which are paying really good amount over here so i would suggest go over there and give it a try okay and do like and comment my video so it will help everyone to learn more i hope you guys have liked the session and i have created a lot of series on sdet so do go and check those out and please subscribe to the talent 500 uh, youtube channel so that next time when we prepare a interview series you guys will be notified about it till then take care bye bye and do remember if you have any doubt put it in the comment section